today's episode, I will take on a crazy challenge. As the ruler of the now united Aztec Empire, I will face the task of defeating every European colonial power. And unfortunately, this won't be an easy mission. Portugal and Spain already have developed colonies in the Americas, and they will wage guerrilla warfare against me. France, on the other hand, means one thing, heavy losses during land battles. Great Britain with its powerful fleet and the fortress of Ireland. But seriously, why so many fortresses in Ireland? Well, I'll have to deal with it somehow. I'll need to seek out unusual alliances and create powerful invasion armies myself. Will that be enough to turn the old European powers into new Aztec colonies? I hope so. Welcome imperialists, Lucas here. The start of my task might not look too bad, as I'm the second power in the world. However, the devil is in the details, because my opponents are also on the list of the world's most powerful nations. Individually, they may not be too strong, but they mostly have mutual alliances. So. I stole maps from the Portuguese to get an idea of the situation in the British Isles. England hadn't managed to conquer the whole island, which was the good news. The bad news was that the Scots had an alliance with France, which I didn't want to know about just yet. Another very bad piece of news was that England remained Catholic, and an invasion of the islands would be met with great outrage from other Catholic countries. I was quite unlucky that the faith in England hadn't changed to Anglicanism, because then Europe would react like this. Just my luck. Despite this, England will be my first target. Before that though, I launched an invasion of some smaller Portuguese colonies. Because Portugal is an ally of England and those colonies would fight me. This way I have a separate war with them. I also created two new invasion armies. In total, nearly 70,000 soldiers, plus, plus a fleet, which includes 30 heavy ships and 41 transport ships. Right before the invasion, I was also able to economically strengthen my country. I decided to go with trade ideas. Thanks to this, I'll have some of the most powerful production policies in the world. Alternatively, choosing administrative ideas would be a good option here, as it dramatically reduces the cost of integrating newly conquered territories into the Aztec Empire. It's quite possible that soon I'll get rid of the colonization ideas and adopt administrative ones in their place. With this preparation, I could finally declare war on England, starting the invasion. Additionally, I'll also attack Portugal. The enemy armies have a slight advantage, especially in artillery. That's why my armies first took the Portuguese islands. They simply make a very good foothold. However, I forgot to finish building a very important monument before the war. Upgrading it to the third level allows me to essentially conquer any province in the world. This will let me ignore a certain mechanic called colonial range. What a beautiful sight. By winning the war with England, I'll be able to take what I want. And basically not just from England, but from any country in the world. And not worry about whether they are within my colonial range. I've established a foothold and now my troops are regenerating before the invasion of Portugal. I'll start with this country because it's not the main target in this war. What are Swedish colonies doing in Brazil? Weird. Weird. I simply didn't expect that. My armies are landing directly in Lisbon. Maybe a bold move, but I know most of the Portuguese army isn't here. A moment ago, I saw 30,000 just in the colonies. So if the English aren't here, I'm almost safe. Especially since my troops have now become more advanced than the European ones. I'll set my army in the new world to automatically conquer those provinces because I don't feel like remembering to capture them. And this option works pretty well. Lisbon fell so quickly, I didn't even notice when. Here, I'm taking a bit of a risk by attacking blindly. Although, I'll steal maps from the British showing the entire Iberian Peninsula. Oh no, don't tell me I just discovered France because of this. Luckily for me, the game just froze at this point and I had to reset it. So I still hadn't discovered Iberia. I conquered Portuguese Colombia, but not the whole thing. I left them one province so they could continue colonizing here. I also began the conquest of Florida in the meantime. But here, I intend to hand over the provinces to my vassal rather than take them for myself. Wow, Florida is bigger than I thought. I quickly managed to capture the entire area of European Portugal and I have to admit, these provinces are really well developed. After the fall of Portugal, I wanted to move my army to the British Isles as quickly as possible while avoiding Ireland. However, my troops landed on the British Isles without any problems. Once I establish a foothold, I'll head straight for London. And I must admit, I'm shocked. The English army is supposedly here, but they're running away from me. Out of curiosity, I attacked the British. And I have to say, green is much stronger than red. We have much better stats, just bad luck with the dice. But still, the British army is retreating. I've established a foothold in Portugal, and along the way, I plundered the region. Part of the English army quickly ceases to exist. And the islands themselves fell into my hands very quickly too. Only I Ireland is more troublesome, with all those fortresses everywhere. Since, surprisingly, the wars in Europe are going quite smoothly for me, I decided to attack the Inca on my old continent, especially since I noticed that the Portuguese had conquered a lot of provinces here, so soon I'll have a colony to conquer. Yes, 
I'm a bad man. I conquered a lot of territory from Florida, and I'll soon hand everything over to my vassal, and then I'll end the war with England, where I'm still not worrying about aggressive expansion, because most countries in the world don't know about me. And I'll be attacking the remaining countries every five years. And returning to my war with England, I need to conquer as much of it as possible, before I discover France, because they won't like that. Oops, I may have conquered too much. That's why I released two vassals in England. I should later convert them into my Aztec colonies. Unfortunately, I made a mistake here and didn't fully read one mission. I need to own 10 provinces in this region, they don't have to be cored, so I could have clicked it earlier. But either way, nothing is lost because after the fall of England and Portugal, I still have France and Spain left. Unfortunately, the land armies of these countries are usually much stronger than those of Portugal or England. I attacked Spain, whose ally is also Portugal, along with a few other less significant countries. I'll make a white peace with Portugal to have only a 5 year truce. The only noteworthy ally of Spain is the Commonwealth, for several important reasons. First, their enormous army of over 100,000 troops. And second, the Commonwealth has good army quality. With those ideas, they are certainly playing for cavalry. Luckily for me, the Spanish armies are. OMG, how strong they are. Oh no, that's just my army stats. Phew. Well, Spain isn't much worse though. It turns out that probably all the countries are playing for army quality, and I didn't even know what France was planning. Nevertheless, I quickly occupied Spain. The only issue left is the Polish problem. Fortunately, the Commonwealth didn't take part in the war, I just had to wait until they withdrew. I took a white piece with Poland. From Spain, I first forced them to break ties with Poland. Honestly, waiting every time for Poland to leave a war with Spain was exhausting. And from the Spanish, I took the entire southern part of the country. This will allow me to complete the mission to settle in Europe, which lets me create my own colony. Let's see how this works. It looks like a stripped down version of a normal colony, at least it doesn't count toward my limit. That's good. I could only convert one of my vassals into such a colony, but I couldn't do it with the second one. I managed to do it with Northumberland, but I couldn't with Tyrone. Oh well, I'll figure out how this works later. I'll also finally use the option to claim uncolonized territories. Unfortunately, it costs 75 government reform points each time. But we're colonizing practically everything we bother. I think I understand why Paradox left that option to gain government reform progress for 50 administrative points. Sadly, I've now discovered the whole world, so everyone will know about my conquests. Huge Sweden, a massive commonwealth, a very weak Ottoman Empire, two Sicilies, interesting game, Austria has fallen, and Bohemia even rules the empire. I don't know about you, but I love these kinds of games when I don't play in Europe and countries can grow without my interference. Well, at least until now. After the war with Spain, I focused on conquest in the new world again. I took over a lot of territory from Portuguese colonies. After Spain's fall, there's really only one giant left to defeat. So, I started forming a few strategic alliances to help me in this war, or possibly in the aftermath when a coalition forms against me. It definitely will, because there are too many Catholic countries in the world. Before attacking France, I decided to attack Portugal again. This time using the religious casus belli. Somehow, religious wars annoy the world less. Because of this, I'll have less aggressive expansion for the territories I conquer, but now it's March of 99, and the time has come for another invasion. Of course, they made an alliance with my ally, so I'll wait a little longer. Oh wait, the problem is somewhere else. The two Sicilies are just the defender of the Catholic faith. <coughs> So, I attacked differently. The main target is England. Additionally, I'll break the more troublesome alliances, like Portugal's and other countries participating in the war. I literally annihilated the entire English army. So, I'll go ahead and set my forces to automatically conquer the entire British Isles. Ah, uh, there's still an English army hiding. Well, not anymore. Shame to admit, but I totally forgot about the Alhambra. It'll come in handy since it's one of those monuments worth having when planning large conquests. I also needed to finish these wars quickly, because the Reformation era was coming to an end. During this period, I could simply conquer more from members of other religions. But based on religious intolerance, well, it's tough. The age of absolutism is ahead of me, and in it, I'll be able to conquer even more, though after some time. As I predicted, the conquest of Catholic England has angered a lot of countries, but I'll do it anyway. I am even tempted to play this whole campaign again and try to focus on faster conquests, to take the colonial nations before discovering Europe. Alternatively, using espionage ideas to lower aggressive expansion costs as much as possible would be helpful here. In the meantime, I'm giving all the English provinces I've conquered to my colony, except for London, because there's a monument I can probably use, and Hampshire. The islands have fallen, and I can now use the Stonehenge monument, and an incredibly cheap advisor is just a bonus. Stonehenge, how do I use this? From what I can see, I'll be able to use this monument once I convert the province it's into my religion. That advisor cost bonus is always welcome. I've already had periods of peace with every major power, so I proceeded with my war against France. Wow. 
It's huge. This might actually be a challenge. Oh, but first, I'll start two more wars in the colonies. I wonder how much this army will grow in a moment. I'm starting with a naval battle. My transport fleet versus a Scottish transport fleet and a French transport fleet. This'll be fun. And from what I see, I'm winning the battle. Yes, I'm winning, winning, ships are going down, events are triggering and Sweden has joined the coalition. Great! When the Papal States join the coalition and the Commonwealth joins, that's bad. I'm hitting France from the south. After all, I have my territories in Spain, then I plan to hit Savoy, then Tuscany. The remnants of Scotland are really just a formality. I'll conquer it completely. How I hate these colonies, I really do. Before the next war, I need to either conquer them or build more fortresses here. Every time all my provinces fall, at least in North America. At least my conquests in South America are going quite well. I'm taking more territories, making my name even bigger. Meanwhile, things weren't going well for me in Southern France. I couldn't break through those fortresses, but after getting through them, I attacked further. And unfortunately, the French army is really formidable too. What saved me is that at least for now, they don't have a numerical advantage for now. A moment later, the French troops arrived and overwhelmed my 100,000 strong army with their numbers. What's worse, in the meantime, I had to attack Spain, Portugal and England. The truces had expired and I didn't want those countries to join the coalition. Therefore, the war with France, although bloody and they managed to recapture all the forts I had taken, will drag on a bit longer. A few years later, I managed to breach the French fortifications in the south again. But Every time I enter a fortress, I'm attacked by tens of thousands of French soldiers. They always have an army of 100,000. Every time I win with 60,000 men, because my troops do the job, but at this point, I'm out of manpower. The worst part is that I need to reach northern France and capture Paris in this war. And on top of that, the era of absolutism has begun. <coughs> Because of all this, I will get at most 5 provinces. I need 15. And more than 700,000 people have died in this war, all for 5 provinces. Additionally, I will have a lot of aggressive expansion, lovely. At least I'll get some plundering done. In France, despite everything, I will release Orléans as a vassal. I'll change their religion to Nahuatl to make them happier. And I'll transfer most of the conquered territories, except for Paris, which just has monuments and it could become my colony, which is nice. Unfortunately, I can't say that France has been defeated. It's now time to regenerate and finish off weaker countries like Canada. Where did Canada come from? Great, it will join the coalition against me. However, I'll temporarily ignore Canada and focus on the remnants of Spanish colonies. I declared war on each one of them in turn, then I'll just attack Spain, hmm? And supposedly end these wars? Sure. After breaking through the fortresses in the Pyrenees, I essentially spread my armies to besiege every subsequent fortress in the area. I also have a mercenary army that I I'll use to storm key fortresses. I want to quickly get Portugal out of this war again so I can attack it in 5 years. I don't even think about it, I just storm. To be honest, I'll release another vassal here, Granada, and I'll give them all the territories, maybe except La Mancha. And I'll take back the Alhambra later. I could have done this earlier, honestly. Maybe release Lion? Alright, I released Lion, it's surprisingly green, because I turned it into my colony. I'll also carry out the mission to destroy El Escorial, the monument in Madrid. I'll get 10,000 gold for that. And better yet, I can rebuild it for 1,000 gold. It also reduces autonomy in all the provinces I've conquered so far. So now only France remains, and I need to conquer 10 provinces from it. My colonies after the conquest don't handle rebels very well. I have to constantly raise armies to suppress these uprisings. Very annoying. Speaking of colonies, I see it's worth making them up to 10 provinces and then making another one. The bonus you see here is essentially permanent. So from each colony with 10 provinces, I get a merchant, 5 to the army limit, and 10 to the fleet limit and increase trade power, which is quite nice. Speaking of trade, I've only just moved trade to the Caribbean region, because I've gained such dominance here that I'm now losing only 20 gold. I'm collecting 88, so it's quite good. Regarding my income, I have just under 500 gold in income, just under 200 gold in net income. I spend the most on the army, but I need to maintain almost a 300,000 strong army at the moment. And regarding the template of my army, everywhere I don't have to fight directly with European states, my template will be 18 for 10. That's more than enough. And for the European continent, I've increased the number of cavalry, infantry and artillery. The peace with Portugal is over, so it's time to take care of them. I first attacked the colonies to finish them off. Then I declared war on Portugal, which will be held by Spain, and I'll soon negotiate a white peace with them. Beautiful. Spanish armies have no chance against my Aztec forces. Although I do lack quality in this army, from the Spaniards I'll take one province to release another vassal here. Essentially a future colonial state. One war and all of Brazil is conquered. Well, maybe not entirely, as I left one province because I didn't want to destroy the Brazilian rebel armies here. I'll just conquer this country in 5 years. Now I'll use the option for further expansion and this essentially gives me almost all of South America colonized and only Scandinavia remains to be conquered. At the same 
same time, a new mission has appeared, Charter the Terra Incognita, which gives me a casus belli for invasion on all Pacific nations, whether it's Japan or Wu, since Ming no longer exists, and I had to declare war on France at the same time as waging war with Portugal. But my peace period has ended here. Although France is at war with Venice, it's nearing its end. The good news is that I have significantly better commanders than in the previous war with France. Sicily won't be of much help in this war, that's for sure. There's no point in having my vassals participate in this war. Therefore, let's have them defend our territory as if there were rebels or something. The defense in southern France has finally been broken, so now I'll push north. Although the army to the right will immediately move towards Savoy to end their alliance with France. I'm not finishing the war with Portugal just yet, I'm in no hurry with that. In any case, I'm finishing my next ideas, I want even cheaper coring costs. And I have. I've maxed out the blood bar. How nice. So, I'll have even cheaper coring. Look at all these bonuses from this mechanic. It's incredibly strong. Alright, allies are doing their job because, thanks to their sacrifice, I'm occupying a larger part of French territory. The only problem is that France is breaking my alliance with them, which might lead to them joining the coalition against me. Luckily, the French armies have a very poor composition. Their artillery will soon be in the front line, and now they are falling. Although some are proving to be quite costly for me, especially when fighting in the mountains. France has been isolated, but it's still has a powerful army, which is hard to catch. However, soon French armies practically cease to exist and I gained victory points. After winning the war, I will release Brittany and Gascony. Interestingly, I can't make them my colonial nation. How does that work? I'll make the peace a bit differently. A kind of snake to take as many forts from France as possible. Capturing them is really annoying. I think I could have had one colonial nation on the subcontinent. It seems to me that's how it must work. Because I could have one colonial nation in Brittany, then create one in France and probably in Iberia as well. Too bad. After this war, I also managed to complete the Blood for the Gods mission. Skulls for the Skull Throne and so on. I successfully formed a strategic green alliance with the Ottoman Empire. This should prevent any future coalitions, at least that's what I think. By the way, I finally built up most of my provinces in Coco. Honestly, it's giving me quite a lot of money right now, which I'll spend on expanding this immensely powerful economic monument in Brazil. The entire Brazilian region is best developed in a place with very high production and bonuses to production goods, especially because of this monument. Next, I slightly reduced Spain, which now gives me almost 100 provinces in Europe. I just need to finish the conquest of France. To be prepared for another war with France, I've initiated additional troop recruitment. I've received reinforcements from the Russians. At this point, the only rival to my powerful Aztec Empire spanning three continents continents is the Commonwealth. Every other country has been humiliated and the European powers stand no chance against me. Only France remains, so I'm attacking it again as soon as I can. It will be a hassle. It's definitely to my advantage that France hasn't managed to replenish its manpower. Meanwhile, I have. At the right moment, I call both the Czechs and the Russians into this war. Specifically, I waited for the moment when Polish troops appeared on the forts where they were. In a way, I'm also repaying the Ottoman Empire's debt of 8,000 gold. The Czechs are fulfilling their role as a buffer against Poland. And from what I see, Russia is doing exactly the same. Letting Poland invade its territory so that Poland loses most of its army, reducing its willingness to fight. Therefore, I'm sending my army to the Polish capital. This should force them to exit the war. I must admit, I didn't expect this. The Ottoman Empire joined the war on my side. All it took was for Russia to exit the war, Poland surrendered, and I only had to crush the remaining French forces, which are indeed very tough. It was a truly bloody war, but I gained control of all the southern forts. I really won't have to break through them anymore. This allows me to handle France now. I'll either use all the great wonders and monuments in France or simply destroy them. This leads me to the establishment and execution of our mission to conquer Europe. Years ago, invaders from Europe came to our territory, and now we've paid them back. And honestly, a mission requiring the fall of France, Spain and Great Britain with such a weak reward. But I must admit, I have quite powerful colonies in Europe. No colonial nation can stand against me now, so I can say I've subjugated them. In both Americas, I'm also the most powerful state. I have no opponents here, especially since I have an incredibly strong income and a very large army. Nothing left but to conquer. And if you like unconventional conquest campaigns, I recommend this episode from Florence. In it, I use the mechanic of spreading peasant republics to unite Italy. 